Good day, brothers and sisters. I am Father Emil Arbatin from the Archdiocese of Capiz, and with me is the newly appointed Archbishop of Manila, His Eminence Jose Cardinal Fuerte Advincula. And when we knew about the said announcement, everybody was joyful and ecstatic about the said appointment, and everybody was also asking about the person and about and, and any information about the new Archbishop of Manila. And with us now, we, for our first ever sit-down interview, we shall hear the new Archbishop of Manila and we will listen to him and his thoughts and his heart and his mind. And we welcome um, Cardinal Joe. Yeah, thank you, Father. Emil, for having me. Um, several hours after the announcement, Your Eminence, uh, a lot of people have been asking about who is Cardinal Advincula, who is Cardinal Joe. And there is really a dearth of information about you, and we did it necessary to have this interview so that uh, people, will, especially from the Archdiocese of Manila, will have something about you as you enter uh, Manila. Um, we have here several questions, and we hope to have a snippet also about your person. Um, first, uh, we want to know your statement as the newly appointed Cardinal of the Archdiocese of Manila. Uh, would like to ask the uh, clergy, the uh, persons, persons in consecrated life, and the lady to accompany me in thanking the Lord for giving me this opportunity through the Holy Father, Pope Francis, to serve the Archdiocese of Manila. Then I also take this uh, opportunity also to uh, ask for the help of the uh, people, again, of the clergy and of persons in consecrated life, uh, in uh, my ministry as uh, Archbishop of Manila, which for me is a very big uh, challenge. Then uh, I also would ask for the prayers of uh, the people, uh, you know, that when I heard about uh, this uh, new appointment that I would be Bishop, uh, Archbishop of Manila, I started praying for the people, especially of the Archdiocese. So may I ask you also to uh, pray for me, that I may be faithful in doing my ministry as the shepherd of the flock in Manila. Now, we proceed on your appointment. When did you know that you were chosen by Pope Francis to be the Cardinal or the Archbishop of Manila? Any initial reactions, Your Eminence? Uh, several weeks ago, uh, I've heard about this uh, uh, new appointment. And my first reaction was surprise. I never in my wildest dream have I uh, thought of becoming the uh, Archbishop of this uh, first diocese in the Philippines. And then also the second reaction was uh, I became afraid because I know that uh, Manila is a very big diocese. It is a highly urbanized uh, area, and uh, uh, my first assignments as a bishop of the diocese, of a diocese, were all, all in um, a very, in, we say, rural dioceses. San Carlos de Negros uh, is a rural diocese, and also even copies, which is an archdiocese, can still be classified as a rural uh, archdiocese. Yes, I was surprised. However, 
I also know that uh, I am just a worker in the Lord's vineyard. The real owner of the vineyard is the Lord, so He will uh, take care of me. Another question is, uh, in Filipino, ano po ang nakikita niyong papel sa inyong bagong tungkulin? Kagaya ng ibang mga obispo, uh, I am still a shepherd, although perhaps the uh, playing field is changed from Capiz to Manila, but my role is still that of a shepherd. So uh, I think my, uh, what I should do is to try to do my best that I will be a shepherd after the heart of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So far, uh, may ma, uh, upon learning that you, be, you will become the Archbishop of Manila, are, are there any initial plans for the, for the Archdiocese? I really, at, at this point, I still do not know the uh, uh, real situation in the Archdiocese of Manila. Uh, but uh, in general, what I can say is that I will uh, continue uh, the work of evangelization. I will try to uh, also engage in projects that, are, that can really help our poor brothers and sisters. And then also uh, strengthen or continue also the initiatives of my predecessors. What can the Archdiocese of Manila expect from, from you as its new Archbishop? Uh, siguro, I will try to be, to concentrate on the uh, pastoral life of the people in Manila, you know. So, uh, uh, I plan to uh, visit the parishes uh, and the other uh, places in Manila. Uh, although, uh, I am sad because uh, this can only be done in a restricted way because of the uh, pandemic, no? Mm -hmm. So I want to uh, look at first the situation in the uh, entire arts diocese, although in a limited way, uh, because a shepherd, I believe, uh, can be uh, more effective in addressing the needs of the people if he knows the real situation or the condition of his flock. How about your eminence, uh, the programs that you intend to implement in the Archdiocese, especially uh, when it comes to your priests? Sa kung mga pare ang pag-uusapan, ang ating mga kaubispuhan ay meron mga may commission, ang tinatawag natin na uh, Episcopal Commission for the uh, Clergy, na ito ay, ito ay may mga programs na pwedeng ma-offer sa mga pari. Uh, especially, hindi lamang sa mga pari na may problema, kundi uh, mga programs na proactive kasi sa mga stages ng uh, AIDS ng tao, may mga uh, issues siya na dapat niyang i-address. Uh, so, uh, uh, ang help ng itong Episcopal Commission uh, for the clergy ay importante. Then, meron ding mga private uh, organizations. For example, sa Capiz, meron yung tinatawag nila na Tagbadbad na ito rin ay isang uh, organisasyon na uh, ang kanyang aim is to help our priests, uh, some who might be undergoing some crisis, or some who are just trying to prepare to have a transition from one stage of uh, uh, life of, uh, to another. Uh, st stages ng kanyang buhay as a person. So, uh, moving forward, Your Eminence, uh, how do you foresee 
your would-be relationship with Malacanang, considering that you are considered as the head of uh, the Archdiocese in the country's capital? I foresee it to maintain a line, an open line of communication with uh, Malacanang. So what is your style of leadership? Um, will you be as vocal as the, late, the legendary Cardinal Sin, the, the well-loved Cardinal Sin? Uh, Cardinal Sin is Cardinal Sin, and uh, I'm afraid I could not be as vocal as Cardinal Sin. Although uh, I have learned a lot from Cardinal Sin for the information of our uh, audience, uh, Cardinal Sin was the uh, rector or the priest who admitted me to the seminary in 1964, St. Pius X Seminary in Capiz. He was also my teacher in Latin when I was in third year in high school. And he was also the one who persuaded my late Archbishop, Antonio Frondosa, to send me to Rome to study canon law. That is a very interesting note, uh, your eminence. So, Cardinal Sin, is also your mentor. Yes, you are right, Father Emil. Next question, Your Eminence. Uh, what are your thoughts on extrajudicial killings and COVID response? I think uh, bishops uh, in whose diocese this uh, EJK uh, are said to have happened, have already spoken uh, a lot on this uh, matter. You know? on this issue. Then I think the government is uh, trying its best to address the uh, uh, COVID uh, problem. Another question. Nabanggit, Your Eminence, sa uh, interview sa uh, Veritas na nakaramdam po kayo ng takot after ng appointment as Archbishop of Manila. Ano po kaya in particular yung kinatakutan nyo? Uh, natatakot po ako dahil uh, uh, I know my inadequacies, and I believe Manila is a uh, very challenging archdiocese, and uh, this is my first time. Uh, this would be my. This will be my first time to be assigned in a highly urbanized uh, the archdiocese. No, so uh, I think that is just an initial uh, fear. But as I have said, uh, God, uh, I continue trusting in the uh, grace of God uh, and in the help also of uh, the people who would be around me. And with this, uh, Your Eminence, uh, we also wish to ask for your message uh, to the people of God of Manila in the face of the pandemic. Yes, uh, I would like to ask the people to, in the midst of this difficulty brought about by the pandemic, to remain steadfast in their faith and also to avail of the uh, spiritual benefits given by the church, even through virtual means. And then also, I think uh, the uh, president of the CBCP yesterday issued a letter uh, reminding the people of three points. Number one is to uh, uh, pray more intensely so that this uh, pandemic uh, would be stopped. So among these prayers are the uh, Oratio Imperata, continue praying the Oratio Imperata, and also the celebration of the uh, Mass in time of pandemic. So second, many of our brothers and sisters, especially those that belong to poor families, are hungry because of uh, lack of uh, work. So this is an opportune time also for 
those who are more fortunate to uh, show their mercy and compassion to this our brothers and sisters and also uh, thirdly we are asked to uh, observe strictly the health protocols that uh, we are reminded of by our uh, government. Uh, we are now in the se second year of this situation. Ito pong Holy Week, gaano kalaga ito para sa sambayan ng Pilipino na sa kabila ng pandemya ay gugunitain natin ang sakripisyo ng Diyos? Napakalaga po ang uh, Holy Week kasi uh, nire-remind po tayo ng tinatawag natin na Pascal Mystery. Ang ibig sabihin ay ang passion or sufferings ni Christ, ang kanyang kamatayan, at ang kanyang muling pagkabuhay. Uh, lahat tayo habang narito tayo sa ibabaw ng mundo ay makakaranas ng mga sufferings, uh, mga difficulties, part and parcel yan ng buhay ng uh, tao. At lahat tayo ay uh, hahantong din sa kamatayan. Kung kailan, hindi natin alam at kung paano, pero sigurado tayong lahat na mamamatay, na mamatay tayo. Pero uh, sinasabi sa atin, nire-remind rin tayo ng banal na kasulatan sa buhay ng ating Panginoon na uh, siya ay muling nabuhay. So, tayo rin ay binibigyan ng ganong hope na after sufferings on earth, after difficulties that we experience, we also can hope for a glorious resurrection just like our Lord. Uh, Your Eminence, anong, mga ano nung aral po ang pwede makuha natin sa pagpapakasakit ng Diyos para sa atin. Ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo ay nagpakasakit para sa atin so that uh, He could uh, bring salvation to us all. Just as uh, He was ready to uh, uh, suffer for us, we also should be ready to suffer especially for others. Um, Your Eminence, uh, ngayong Semana Santa, hindi po natin magagawa yung mga tradisyonal na gawain dahil sa ilang regulasyon. Ano po sana may papayo po natin sa mga Katoliko para magunita pa rin ito na ang Semana Santa? Alam ko po na uh, especially sa mga lugar na hindi pwede ang physical presence ng mga tao, at sa mga tao na kahit permitted ito sa kanilang lugar ay dahil sa takot o dahil sa mga kapansanan o sa mga sakit ay hindi silang pumunta sa ating simbahan. Uh, sana ay magpa-participate pa po tayo kahit sa pamamagitan na lamang ng mga virtual uh, means no? sa radyo, sa TV, sa live streaming sa Facebook, then siguro uh, gugunitain po natin ang, ang mga naranasan na pagkakasak pagpapakasakit ng ating Panginoon sa pagbasa ng Ebanghelyo, lalo na yung part saan uh, uh, where, we, where narrated is the uh, passion, death, and resurrection of our Dear Lord. Now, what is your take on the IATF resolution, Your Eminence, allowing once a day religious gatherings of up to 10% uh, from April 1 to 4? I think uh, I'm thankful that the IATF has reconsidered its uh, position, no? at least uh, especially uh, during this uh, Holy Week. We have a uh, religious gathering, even just in a very limited manner, but uh, still we are given this uh, opportunity to uh, celebrate uh, this uh, 
Holy Week activities. Uh, Your Eminence, how do we celebrate now Holy Week amid the increasing number of cases of this virus and its new strain? I think we have to uh, celebrate it uh, as much as possible away from uh, other people, especially in Manila where there is uh, much restrictions of now, as of now because of the uh, new cases. Uh, so we have to stay at home as much as possible and also be very uh, extra careful. And what are your experiences here in Capiz do you think will be most helpful for you when you go to Manila? Mm, I've heard that uh, uh, Manila, which is an archdiocese of around three million people, mm -hmm. have around 80 plus uh, uh, parishes. So I do not know if what uh, I started in San Carlos, the mission stations which I started in San Carlos and in uh, Capiz would also be uh, 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 applicable to the Archdiocese of Manila that I have to uh, see. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, I still have to uh, consult uh, the priests and the people when I arrive in Manila about the, uh, the need for the smaller parishes or smaller uh, jurisdictions within the uh, diocese. So far we have covered your eminence, uh, the uh, more important questions. Now for the last one, let's just be light. Uh, what are your hobbies? Mm. Uh, I always have been an outdoorsy person. I am a lover of nature. So uh, I am into uh, mountain trekking, also into uh, photography, and into plants. Especially I plant trees, I am fond of trees, especially indigenous trees. So even before the pandemic, you are already a plantito. Yes, okay. yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. okay. Always a plantito. I like trees. I like trees. Okay. Uh, Your Eminence, uh, uh, we wish to thank you for this chance that you allow us for this interview. And with this, we hope that those, uh, the people, especially from the Archdiocese of Manila, will be able to get some information, some data about you as b before you step on for, uh, for that uh, Archdiocese. So we keep uh, our prayers for you as you take on this new journey in your ministry as a bishop. Father Emil, thank you once again for having me.